Hey everybody, it's your pal Mike Zombie, and this week we're going to talk about Return of the Living Dead Part 3 from 1993. No, not Part 2. I did Part 2 a while ago, and that sucked monkey ass. This was surprisingly better. I believe I first saw this on HBO, or it was probably, yeah, it was probably HBO, and then I think about it, Late Night. And I've seen this probably four or five times, but I realize I've never seen it from the start since I specifically watched it on Netflix a couple nights ago. I think I've always come in probably 10 or 15 minutes into the story. So pretend part two never happened, and this might be a little better. This is easier to take. We start off with a young couple in love, Kurt and Julie. Julie, of course, is played by Melinda Clark, and she's been in a ton of stuff since this. I mean, you've seen her in Charmed, The District, The O.C., Vampire Diaries, CSI, Entourage, Nikita, and she's staying very busy. And she is just an absolute knockout. That was a great choice for this movie. It starts with them as a young couple. You get the feeling she's like crazy and wild, but he's wanting to be crazy and wild, but he's just not up on her level. And Kurt's father is a colonel in the army. And I know where most of this was filmed. It's actually not far from where I live. The intro, or near the intro, we see Kurt and Julie like on these cliffs that kind of overlook the ocean. That's actually Palos Verdes, which is right over the Vincent Thomas Bridge from where I live. I think it's they're probably by the old Marine Land, which is no longer there. And I think Marine Land was probably just about being torn down by the time this film was being made. But she's like, did you get it? And he goes, yeah, I got it. And she's like, all right. And they hop on this motorcycle and take off. And his father's overlooking this project, running this project about bringing the dead back to life. If he'd followed the story at all, from Return of the Living Dead to 2, 3, 4, 5, Rave to the Grave, and whatever else the fuck they did, it's all based upon this chemical agent designed to spray on pot. 245 trioxin. Kills pot, brings people back from the dead. And this stuff will work whether it's just introduced as gas, whether it is liquefied and comes down as rain, doesn't matter contacts dead flesh dead flesh comes back now this is the series famous for talking zombies this movie kind of backed up from that and i really appreciated that part one um i loved it it was the first real zombie movie i ever got into and i went straight from that to dawn of the dead so i was loving it i never liked talking zombies i still don't but i completely excuse it for return to the living dead i love the movie too much part two of course was an embarrassing hunk of shit where it was just i don't know it was shit and it's a whole other podcast i did you can check it out this kind of went a little more traditional as far as non-speaking zombies there are two types of zombie in this film zombies that come out of the military canisters of 245 tracks and look like shit they're big blobs of misshapen flesh and you know, and there was no reason for them to be misshapen. The other the other two movies don't show this chemical agent is distorting the body. These look like the fucking toxic Avenger. But the zombies in this film that were humans brought back to life by either uh, being bit by the zombies or uh, exposed to the gas look really good. They did a really great job with those. But, I mean, it had to have been two different teams doing this shit, I would think, because it was just so night and day different. My hat's off to whoever did the actual, you know, appliance walking around zombies. Did a very, very nice job. All the excitement is that she has talked Kurt into getting his father's key card from his desk so they can sneak into this base. This base is kind of looks like just a warehouse that's filled with shipping containers. But these shipping containers are all welded together. They provide safe little workspaces and they make hallways. Basically, it's a fucking habit trail for the army. And so they sneak in. And he rides onto base like the fucking king of the ring. He's like, hey, I'm here to see my dad. And they're like, go on through. And they sneak in with a key card, obviously just to impress Julie. Because the kid doesn't seem like he gives a shit much about his dad or what his dad does. So they crawl up on these containers, which, of course, have convenient windows on top to spy down. And they watch a man being brought back to life. Of course, this is amazing shit. So they freak out. They take off. They just get it on like crazy because that's what you know zombies do they make us horny apparently so we kind of flip to the experiments going on inside colonel john reynolds kurt's father is running this project that's it's kind of twofold it's not just a human weapons project which they kind of reveal that this is like the outcome of all the boobery and mistakes made in the first two movies with oh no we're making more zombies accidentally with this shit that now the go- the military said hey we're going to use this to make mobile weapons that never need sleep never get tired 
so forth. His project is twofold. They know the two for five tracks and brings them back, but we need a way to turn them off. So they've devised this really dumb mechanism for doing this. It's like a CO2 gun that's hooked up to a tank. It's either a compressor or a CO2 tank or something, which uh, they put these little frozen darts into. And if you shoot the zombie right in its forehead, it kind of freezes its face. It would be like dropping the face into like liquid nitrogen, you know, so it kind of it cracks and gets frozen. It kind of does that. And the zombies, of course, you paralyze the brain, they fall down. And they answered the old question of why do zombies eat brains? Because they kind of mentioned, hey, you know, and it's a good thing that we realize that the zombies eat the brains to get the electricity from the synapses. Okay, well, thanks for going well out of your way to painfully um, stumble through that bit of information. So that's why they eat the brains. Uh, the chief scientist, Colonel Sinclair, comes down to oversee Colonel John Reynolds. Colonel Sinclair is a fucking bitch. She just really wants to take over and really wants him to fail. So our couple have already gone, so they don't see the carnage that happens when they they bring they freeze the zombie back with a bullet to, with an ice bullet to the head. Not ice bullet theory. That's a whole other cool little concept. Maybe we'll talk about ice bullets someday. Anyway, but they freeze him. He drops down dead, and as they're trans, they're, they're transferring him around because he's not dead. He's kind of just stunned. So they're going to strap him down. Of course. One of these techs in this super safe, super controlled military, you know, experimentation lab with every single type of, you know, lock and safety precaution and decontaminating room and everything. Um, he, for some reason, decides to stick his three fingers into a zombie's mouth to do something. And, of course, as we expect, the zombie comes back and bites his fucking fingers off. Because, you know, whether you're picking up a shark or a zombie or a piranha, the first thing you do is put your, your tender little fingers in its mouth. Stupid. No one would ever do it. So he gets bit. He flings his arm. And behind the glass where we have Colonel Reynolds and everybody else, a line of blood streaks across and starts to drip immediately. And it's very noticeable because it's right in their faces. And so the zombie's back. The other guy's fucked up and going to become a zombie. So the other doctor runs over and, of course, now can't fire the fucking CO2 gun to save his life. And he's sh shooting him in the ass, shooting him in the ball, shooting the fucking wall. Finally shoots the zombie and brings him down. He's like, okay, well, you know, I'll clean this shit up. And the other doctor is suddenly a zombie, bites the other guy who flings himself, and now we look back at the, you know, four foot, four inch thick glass wall, and blood splatter in the exact same spot across the same exact faces with the same fast rate of drip. So somebody must have snuck out and cleaned it. So it was a real bad continuity error is what I'm driving at. But whatever. And they're like, seal the room. So they seal the room. So Colonel Sinclair, a.k.a. Super Bitchosaurus, is like, oh, well, darn, you really fucked up, Colonel, and... I'm going to take your command, and I'm going to be running the show, and basically pushes him out. He goes home all dejected, and his son's there, and he's getting on with Melinda Clark. I'm jealous. He's like, son, I need to talk to you. We're being transferred to Oklahoma next week, or whatever. And he starts throwing a little fucking fit. We keep moving, blah, 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 and I don't have time to make any friends. You know, all the things you would expect. Not just a military brat, because military kids are pretty fucking tough, but just a, he's just a fucking bitch himself, crying, I don't want to go. So him and Julie hop on his motorcycle with no helmets in California, completely illegal, go flying down the freeway, um, and she's grabbing his dick, making him ride faster. He loses control because they almost hit a truck. She flies face first into a telephone pole and breaks her neck. So he thinks, well... All right. Apparently, awesome things that always end well were going back at going on back at the lab. So maybe I'll just take her back there. So he pulls a fucking weekend at Bernie's and pulls her over his back like a fucking bitch cape, and gets on the motorcycle and goes riding back. Drags her in, and of course walks into this room, place that was a room of death like an hour ago previously, and everything's clean and tidy. Goes in and immediately knocks over a canister and covers Julie in the magic 245 tracks. And, of course, a zombie tumbles out, but we don't see him right away. And she comes back. She she was fresh dead. So she's like, whoa, hey, I'm, hi, sweetie. Ow, my neck hurts a little bit because it's broken. Uh, oh, well, let's get out of here. And he's totally happy. We're going to be together forever. Or until you start biting the shit out of everybody. There's the part of the movie where I can just kind of skip through because they had a whole bunch of lame-ass-looking puppet zombies walking around because there's 
complete fucking chaos. One gets out, you know, triggers another one getting out, and one bites the security guard. Security guard suddenly fucked up. It's Chinese fire drill. Okay. They're trying to get away because he's just going to run away. And Julie is changing before her eyes. She's she's dead. She knows she's dead. She's kind of freaked out about it, but she seems like she's going to be a good sport. And suddenly she's craving human flesh. They run into a, a gang of low riders. She bumps one of them. They start to argue, you know. And of course, these three guys who are there to really rob a convenience store shoot the owner of the store, rob it. And Julie actually bites one of them who, of course, will turn into a zombie later. Julie just starts tripping. She's eating flesh. She's freaking out. She decides to kill herself, jumps off a bridge. Of course, bitch man himself goes chasing after her. And with the help of the river man, who is a cool homeless dude, and this is, and if you see this film, it's all filmed in the L.A. River, which you'll recognize from many, many zombie films. The, I forget the one I did with Ving Rhames the other day that I liked, the one that ended up in Long Beach with the zombie tigers. They're in the canal. This movie's in the canal. Grease, the car racing scene, Grease Lightning, that was in the canal. This ends up in so much shit. And this is really a hotbed for zombie filmmaking. Because in like a like a four square block area above the L.A. River, you have where Return of the Living Dead was actually filmed. I mean, it's it's like two streets down. I, I drive by it all the time. I go look at it. If I'm by there uh, in my truck at lunch, I'll go hang out in the street and take lunch in front of the fucking warehouse where all the zombies were while I ate my fucking potato salad. It's like four square blocks. The area where this was filmed, uh, and also they have a lot of old vacant warehouses down there that they use for stock footage for hang, you know driving by. In a lot of these films, that's there uh, where suicide and the fucked up Cadillac go racing down the road with the cast of Return Living Dead on their way to see Freddy. That's along the top of the of the L.A. River, the same spot right above where all this other shit for Return of the Living Dead 3 was filmed, right above where the car race from Greece was filmed. They use it for everything. And I've seen a bunch of other movies take place in there, and I laugh because it's, it's really just part of L.A. that everybody knows, but, but it's also completely loaded with homeless people. The sad thing about this is where they film all the shit, there's just a crap load of bums there, and there are all the time. Because, let's face it, this is L.A. We're too busy making money, getting coffee, and avoiding people that need our help. This is all goes on there. Runs into the river man. She tries to kill herself. And, of course, river man befriends them and protects them and puts them in, like, a, a switch room or something. So the lowrider gangsters get pissed because one of them is clearly dying. They show up. And they're just going to kill everybody. One thing we've noticed is Julie, every time she gets the urge to eat flesh, she gets this crazy pain to where she will hurt herself. She'll shove needles into her skin. She'll take like a corkscrew and kind of work it through her finger because the pain is a distraction from the want or desire to eat flesh. And of course, because she doesn't want to, doesn't want to hurt Kurt, her boyfriend. And the only other guy around is River Man, and he's so dirty, I don't even think a fucking bear would maul his ass. He's pretty dirty. So there's a bit of a time lapse where River Man falls asleep outside this switch room or, uh, you know, this, like, steam pipe room while he's guarding them, and Kurt falls asleep inside, or whatever the deal was, and Julie has converted herself from a beautiful Melinda Clark into a zombie woman whose face, hands, chest is just completely full of metal spikes I mean, she, she's lacerating her flesh all over because, one, it makes her feel better, but she's actually embedding her fingers with spikes so she can use them as weapons. Uh, Lowriders show up. There's a big fucking fight, and home bitch kills just about everybody. It's pretty sweet. Pulls one guy, uh, his fucking head almost off, but still connected to his spine, so it looks like a tail with a head on it. Pretty awesome. And that was a cool zombie as well. Colonel John Reynolds, his dad, though he's lost his command, has his faithful men with him and round all the zombies up. And everything pretty much goes back to the research center. And this includes Julie because uh, he got separated. And then he let his, uh, his dad shoot her in the head and freeze her up, you know, because she was getting to be out of control. So in the end, he goes back to save her, though she is a zombie. So he walks in with his, da you know, with his dad, and his dad goes one way. He kind of takes off and frees all the fucking zombies. She still kind of knows who he is, and uh, he gets bit in the process. Riverman's there. He's a fucking bionic zombie. And uh, they do a little weird kind of bub thing. I don't know. It wasn't completely a blatant ripoff. So I wasn't too pissed about it, but it was kind of obvious. The movie just kind of ended. It wasn't very good, but Melinda Clark makes it certainly worth watching. I appreciate the fact that they kind of broke from the Return of the Living Dead tradition. And the zombies were real zombies. Did I say real zombies? Hmm. 
think about that. They weren't articulating. They weren't singing. They weren't asking for send more paramedics. None of that shit. They were just being dead people. So Return of the Living Dead Part 3 from 2003. Uh, I, I think just because I'm doing the franchise, I'm going to have to do Rave from the Grave. And I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to figure out what the fuck I'm talking about before I bring this nonsense. Have a great week. We got some Revenge of the Nerds coming up pretty soon. Looking forward to that. No one 15, brothers. McPierce pointed out that I have not been pimping myself out on Twitter, and I really should. You always want to add at McPierce, and certainly if you would like to see the ramblings of a madman, you can add me. It's your pal Mike Z on Twitter. Uh, I wanted Mike Zombie, but some rapper has it. I'm going to outlast that motherfucker. I'll tell you what. It's your pal Mike Z at Twitter. And, uh, yeah. Name something men wear to bed, Margaret. A nightcap. A nightcap, Jeff. Sweatsuit. Sweatsuit A.W. Nightcap. Nightcap, Elizabeth. A fucking bitch cape. Have a great week, you guys. We'll talk to you soon.